Hey everybody, welcome to the DIY Pro Show. And on this episode, we're gonna do something that sounds like a horror movie, but will leave us with a wonderful project. It's called reskinning a deck. The situation is, the posts are good, the beam is good, the frame is good, but the deck boards, pickets, and top cap, well, they've seen better days. So I'm gonna take some tools, my strong fashion choice of a double flannel, get to work on this, and make over this deck. Watch what happens next. One of the good things about a deck reskin is, if all the pieces sort of fit together, your materials list is done for you. If the existing deck is up to or at least close to current code conditions, which this one is, you can just take and copy what's there, make your materials list, and either call a delivery or go get it yourself. my continuing tradition of driving on people's private property, I've got my utility trailer here where I'm going to throw all these deck boards. The closer you can get the receptacle that takes the debris away to the project itself without damaging anything else, the more time will save. Also, big stuff goes there and little stuff goes there. This is exactly why you never notch a deck post. That's an inch and three eighths. They cut more than half of this post out to notch it. And with very little force, prying ah, this railing assembly off, I cracked this. Change taking the deck apart to a different scenario, like a wedding reception, first communion, whatever, some family party. The Super Bowl team wins. You're out here partying, having a good time. A lot of people lean on it for a picture, whatever it is, and off they go. Real proof that notching a deck post just does not work. Don't do it! Good example. The screw that just sheared off. The trailer, whatever you throw this stuff in, it's going to end up with a lot of this in it. And the takeaway is beest thou careful. When possible, throw them down and remember that when you're unloading it at the dump. So the choice I'm making in dissecting the deck boards basically boils down to this. If I can see the screw heads, I have a better than 90% chance of extracting them easy way. If I can't see them, there's too many years of them being embedded with dirt and stuff from the outdoors. So I'm going to pry those apart. Then I'm going to get some eye protection and I'm going to knock them down, hopefully shear them off, and then I'll tape the top of those deck joists to give them a little added protection and more years of use from this deck. Just because these things don't break, doesn't mean they don't wear out. See how that's getting shiny at the top? You know, no matter what kind of this you have, when they're getting shiny at the top, something is happening to the metal. I'll call it metal fatigue, I don't really know what it is. The bottom line is, it's getting slippery. So you're losing friction 
and Phillips heads are meant to cam out anyway. They were originally designed, let me go off on a segue if you don't mind, for machining. So they were designed to drive to a certain point and then cam out when they met a certain amount of resistance. We don't want that here. That's why I use a different kind of screw. I'll show you that later. Okay, Captain Segway, at it again. Demo bar. This thing is awesome. Last thing on this ramp. Leverage is your friend. Also, there is nothing wrong with the wood fiber here on these 20 year old southern yellow pine pressure treated deck boards. You could try to convince me there's something wrong, but you'd be rowing your boat uphill, man. This hammer has a neat little feature that is enabling me that is enabling me to mostly move these screws. I just did like 20 of them, just like this. There we go. That side puller. This is the worst take on planet Earth. I'm going to stay with it. The side puller enables me to move the screw just a little, break its seal on the wood fiber, with maximum leverage, and then I can just pop it out. There, finally, one work. Now that the deck boards are down and in the trailer, some of those screws that were buried inside the wood, I can countersunk. I can now see them. For the most part, the threads are still intact. I can get them out the way they went in. Next up in the clean installation process is to get them installed to this concrete foundation wall. I've countersunk a hole for the nut head and the washer assembly this so it'll lay flat and I piloted a hole through here which you totally can't see but there it is next gone ahead just put them in the center of this joist bay every other bay taken my pencil and just mapped out mapped out a little dot the hole in here is 5 8 pencils 5 8 it gives the shank of the uh, lag screw little wiggle room to find the hole and then it's rotary hammer time get the tip right on the mark I'll get the dust cleaned out from that hole and I want to make sure the hole is deep enough so what I'm going to do is one use this and two steal a turn from my buddy Matt Reisinger and Matt calls something like this an everyday carry. And the reason I use a scratch all as an everyday carry right here in this little pouch of my nail bags is because I use it for all kinds of things all the time. This is a perfect example. Can't get a tape measure in there, but I can get that in. I know it's deep enough and I'm good to go. One more thing. When you're drilling with the rotary hammer into concrete, the idea is to let the tool do the work. So control it, have a good, stable control of it, but don't force it. It will not make the tool pulverize the concrete in here any faster. Here's my mark. Okay, here we go. Next, in go the bungs. These have a front and a back. You want to keep the open part 
and the unthreaded part towards the front of the hole. Tippy tap. Next up on ye old hit parade, half inch lags, cut washers, impact. I brought the ratchet socket attachment with me today, the socket adapter. And now, just put it all into place. Put a little thread in there. Yeah. A little thread in there. Whammer slammer at home. Last step of my scintillating series on DIY deck cleats. If you ever watched any of my other deck building videos, you might notice that I'm a little bit freak noodle for top left, bottom right connections with structural screws. And this is a good situation and a good example where you can get on top of yourself with your fasteners. So here I went top left, bottom right, and here I went top right, bottom left, so they don't run into each other. So that's very intentional. Next, I'll just put this in just a little shy of the ledger up there. I've started these already. I can wanger banger these in. That's centered. That looks nice. And I want to countersink that head as far as it'll go. So I get a nice solid connection. I am way too finicky for my own good. That's dead straight there now. And back to my everyday carry story. I'm putting in 5 16 by 3 coated power lags here. Washer head. I like the washer head. Um, and that's a lot of thread to get going uh, in a piece of wood, especially if it's an awkward situation. So, use number 10 million for me is I'll take my scratch all, just pilot a little starter hole. I realize you can't see that, but that's what I'm doing. You can figure it out from there. Put it back. I use it all the time. And, wire banger these home. Because I'm a champion of overdoing it in these videos, I'm just going to record it all. I don't know what my problem is. But I think this is important. Before we get to the next step, just putting down some flashing tape, I'm just going to take my hammer and run it along the top of every joist and the ledger board. And the reason for that is, the reason for that is, in case I left any screws, screw shanks in here, and they're up just a little, I can hammer them down. And mainly, there's no other reason other than I don't want to rake my hand across it later. So, spend five minutes on that and not any minutes in the hospital with laid open hand. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the perimeter of the deck, check any connections here, just sling a few new screws in there. In order to integrate the first dozen or so deck boards with the existing concrete step, I need to do some pre-cuts here. I want to make sure the ends are nice and square and I've got a good edge facing that stair. Because I'm doing so many boards in a row and I've got drops, instead of picking up every single piece, I'm just going to take my square, use it as a guide. Oh, the other thing I'm doing while I'm here this tape is terrible. The other thing I'm doing wrong here is selecting my good side. So, oh, that's perfect. No knocks. Nothing hits the ground. We all know the old chisel trick. Wood's a natural product, obviously. I love using it. Not every single piece is perfect. It used to be a tree, cut it some slack. Bang! I did a video about this once. It lasted like 10 seconds. Deck it, don't wreck it. So I've got to make a notch to get around the front corner of that step. And rather than do all that layout on a full-size deck board, make the cut, only to find out I'm wrong, what I do instead is I just make a test piece. Okay, next thing, this is a half and half cut. Anytime I can cut a straight line, I do it with a round blade. 
cuts cleaner, it's straighter, and it's faster. Now, because the round blade doesn't complete the cut, obviously, we'll go to the jigsaw. Boom! And nothing gets the round blade. Post! Come on, layout. I got a clamp here with a sharp angle down so I can get to my fastener here and my fastener here. Oh, that's nice. That is plum Ricky right there. Sweet! It's a five inch power lag. Now I can futz around with this without it flopping around. Last step is I take right in the middle in the back, which you 100% can't see, at an angle, so I'm coming in like this, so I don't pierce the front of my bevel here. I do two of them, right in the middle. And that's how you empty these little batteries. I love this part. It's in my other videos too, but I love the utility and the just absolute common sense of running all these boards wild and then cutting them all at once. I enjoy it. It's a critical cut. I'm going to try not to mess it up by talking too much. Pop it. Something's not right. Yikers. I almost made a huge mistake. Take two, it's this board I snapped to. Yeah, that's different by about three and, a, three and a half inches. Ah, that's square. Good luck whoever's in there. Don't forget to clean up. Clean job sites. A happy job site. Because I'm going to apply a 2x4 trim here to lock the posts in and to add another layer of detail, that's one and a half inches. I've got a two inch overhang because I want to be a half inch overhanging that. So, in order to measure my post locations accurately, I don't really want to depend on the edge of the deck. Even though this is straight, maybe if something's a little bit out of square, I want to measure reality, not theory. So what I've done is I've laid out a four by four block, just like my post, with my setback here. And on both sides, I've marked it. I'll put it in position where the post goes, and I'll just trace it. One here, we'll cut it all out and get these posts in. More round blade square notch action. What I do is I prop it up on four by four blocks after I do my layout, and that gives me an appropriate gap to blow leaves through, also so it conforms with not fitting a four inch sphere through this space. I lay out both my rails at the same time. I'll get them installed. We'll put pickets in with a two by six top cap. And I'm cutting with my good side down. Last thing, this is the front top cap. And I'm gonna use it to lay out the other sides coming back. I'll show you what it all looks like when I'm done. Oh, that's so nice. Yes!
so, it's windy out today. That ruined my shot. I gotta stay closer to the camera. Man, high winds today. Also, dark hands, because I just put some mulch in there. Let's just make this the whole shot. Red light's still on. Everything's good. That's it for another episode of the DIY Pro Show, everybody. The deck is in. It's better than it was before. The camera's upright. For now. For now. And this thing's Fandango. If you like this video, and I hope you did, please subscribe to the channel and comment below. All right, everybody. That's it. DIY Pro Show. Woo!